Okay, so Rek'Sai is back in League of Legends after the recent mini rework. Once again, a mini rework. Dominating top lane will be nerfed for that, but the jungle is going to be just fine. Although, even though she is really, really strong, you just don't see enough of her being played in general. Let's see in this game in Grandmaster exactly how you can maximize the kit again in Azir. Permanently Azir all the time in these videos, but, uh, you know... Wright's favorite bird. Now, Rex is going to go down to Raptor's Red Krugs. It looks like we're going for a bottom lane uh, gank here. Full on trade from the Nautilus hitting the hook. Hook City with uh, Jinx and Kaiser ADC. We'll go down to the Krugs now for level 3. Kha'Zix starting on the top side. And a fantastic ward here. So we'll see when he does the Raptors. At this stage, red side bottom lanes really do need to pay attention to... Jungle ganks at these time frames, you know, 230, 245, junglers are Raptors, Red Krugsy and coming for a gank. Jinx now sticks around, doesn't think about the Rex side, so this should be a free kill here. She has flash up, so all we have to do is pay attention to that, or if she's smart, she'll save it. Let's have a look. You absolutely must head over to Vukayu.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content seen nowhere else, as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals as we saw with the record number of people hitting them at the end of season 13. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to Vukayu.gg. Free kill! Now, as we talk about, you're seeing the Kha'Zix here, we see him on this. When you make this kind of play, red side quadrant bottom lane, and you show up early enough for the enemy jungler to still be on Raptors, typically that means they will cut to vertical. That's the problem with showing in these situations. Now, against your fast clearing red side quadrant junglers, right? Your Karthuses, your Nidlis, your Zyras, your Brands, anything that can clear quickly, you're usually okay because they'll be fully sequencing down here. So in theory, if you make this gank off, you could use prior for the invade, but ideally, you know, if you're the ganking jungler, at the very least, you still have your blue side. Now, Kha'Zix will see this go through. Max health physical damage on the Rexa at this particular stage, obviously. Uh, on that E instead of true damage, they changed that. And missing HP on the R. Numbers shifted around, but largely the play style is still the same, right? We have fighter builds, we have some assassin based builds, but really they're incentivizing fighter based and you know that's fine, it's really strong. So Rek'Sai sees this obviously, knows that she's losing this, decides to go for the invade on the camps here and the Thresh decides to protect. The Rek'Sai then uses pathways to go all the way around, this is where that scanner is really useful in that first rotation. I don't personally like having the scanner first rotation for most of my playstyles, but if you're a red side quadrant ganking jungler, and you need to make this kind of play, then please buy a scanner and do it properly. Now, the Urgot is in a bit of a rough situation. The Kha'Zix is just going to walk up, hit a Kyoto attack, flash out, and just survives. Rek'Sai does get the Scatter Crab as well. I think here, for the Rek'Sai, I probably want the Grump as well. I want to distort the Kha'Zix's sequencing, so when he invariably does this and goes back to base now, probably he goes topside again for Grubs plus second spawn Krug, second spawn Raptors. But if he does come down here, I want him to have level 1 Raptors, no Grump, things out of sequence, and we're good. Now, Rek'Sai obviously sees a follow-up gank in the bottom side, which is exactly what you should be looking for. But if you look at it, obviously, there's a few things we can talk about. Let's watch the gank go through first. Little E-Focus there, we give that up. I would prefer to... I would, you know, in your games, if you want to carry, please, doing a little bit of a knock-up is absolutely fine. Uh, you can do that. Now... Just theoretically, because if we go for this, if we go for this here, we have a much better angle of approach to the bottom side, considering as soon as we see the Thresh again, we press tab, we see him with a control ward, we see him again, we press tab, no control ward. So we know he placed a control ward somewhere here, and I would prefer to do the Grump, get the experience and get the bottom lane. But if the gank is there, don't do the Grump, right? That's not what we're saying. Don't forsake the gank for the Grump. It's just if I can gank... Gromp and Blue, I'll do all those things. Now, Kha'Zix in the meantime died because Faker decided to rotate to the top lane. Lazy based a little bit, not paying attention. Rek'Sai does this, knows that the Kha'Zix is dead. But at this stage, now it's a tempo game. Understanding that, hey, I can smite this, take this and get out. It's a riskier game, but I think, fine, I'm okay with that. You know, most of us know that we can do that Gromp and leave and then reset. And obviously, we don't exactly know where the Kha'Zix is going to go at this particular stage. Top side, is he going to come back down? And Kha'Zix shows an award. Lazy pathing. Well, you know, 
sort of lazy. Well, not really lazy, just not very precise. And Rex says here for the counter gank. Fear into knockups, into auto attack combos, into Qs, into Es, into true damages. There we go. One more knockup, another auto attack. Q again. Keep queuing. Both. <laughs> Little slap on the side. Thank you, Galley, for going in and giving that to us so we can shove this wave. There's almost no reason why, if you play Rek'Sai in this current meta in this season, you are not having thriving early games. On your tracking, it's on your ganking execution, it's on your understanding of what the enemy jungle wants to accomplish, and really just dishing out the right amount of damage. Remember always to get your, your full fury as much as possible, get that regeneration, get that maximum damage, use your ult properly. Nothing has changed in that regard, right? All of these things are the same. Now, Kha'Zix shows on the top side, scans, wants to go for grubs. Rexa says, ha ha ha, I'm level 5. We could honestly go for this, but the Dian is the, the problem. For me, obviously, the Dian is a big problem. Now, he's, she's going to go back to base. You see, this is where I disagree with a lot of what's going on. I understand why we're basing here as Kha'Zix. Rexai. Void. The Kha'Zix, though, decides to go investigating because he knows that this Dian is level 6 and the Urgot's going to show top lane again and we can dive this. As a Rex, I think you should be thinking about the fact that Kha'Zix is thinking about that. Also, we can take our camps away from the Kha'Zix potential counter jungling and counter dive this, counter gank this. How much do you want to play around your top laner? Question mark. I mean, we're looking at the, the Diana here. Let's just swap it over. It's not actually that late. They're close enough. Look, the identical gold. It's still in the flux um, in terms of who can take over. I would much prefer to shadow this scenario, in my opinion. I mean, look, you're sitting here as Rexa, you do the Grumpt, it's a free kill. It's another kill, I think it's a little short-sighted to not go for this. Got the Galio ult, Galio benefits, Kha'Zix runs away. It, it, you know, that, I think that's a better play. Do the Grum, see the Kha'Zix, Shadow, Counter Gank, Cool Beans, double kill. Fall back to this if you need to, don't go back to base. Now you shove on the bottom side. Better situation all round, we're level 6 all round. And now we go for this dive here, we hopefully get level 6 uh, from the first kill. If we can get one, we don't. Now Kais is taking a turret. Jinx is trying to go in, she gets it, she gets a reset. Clunky few seconds. A nice Prey Seeker cube by the Rex side there. Turns back in, again, auto attack cancel. Forces the flash from the Jinx. The power here, early game, is really nice. But again, it's seven minutes, we're still not yet level six. We'll get it here on this wave. But Kha'Zix, really not such good jungling. And that's why it's not always the best thing to vertical. Yes, we got two camps, yes, we got the dive. Unfortunately, we died, but it's also... It just desyncs you from the whole map. You know, it's nice to have control of the whole map. It's nice to be able to impact top, bot, and mid, and deny the enemy jungler. And a lot of the times when you guys go vertical like this, if the enemy jungler makes the right reads and your laners don't, they could get super fed. If you make the right reads, but the enemy jungler cuts you off from those things, yeah, now what, right? Like, you just compromise too much. It's just, it's good. It's the right thing to do. It's the, it's the thing that makes sense. Just understand how to play around that if you're going to make those decisions. Otherwise, if you're not sure and you don't want to worry about it, and you prefer the Rexa just to go back and go topside so you can offset the bottom lane gank early, then please, don't vertical. Just sequence down as Kha'Zix and make the right plays. Because this chaos is perfect. Perfect for the Re for the Rek'Sai. Now, of course, she has a thousand gold in pocket already again as he rotates. We got another tunnel we can take, but we can wait for the Galio or decide just not to do this because it's a 4v2. Probably the right decision. Unless you can snipe someone with Prey Seeker. Could try... Obviously, the Kha'Zix is going to be here. Kha'Zix goes in. This is very much a who is winning match of Kha'Zix versus Rek'Sai. Uh, who has got the lead? Who can dominate the most? Who has the most gold? Variably, Kha'Zix does do a lot later on. But I think a Rek'Sai snowballing should have no issue controlling this matchup uh, whatsoever. And I think we'll, we'll see that in this particular game. So, Ghostblade done for the Kha'Zix. Dragon secured for the Rek'Sai. Now Rek'Sai knows, okay, bottom lane have gone back to base. I've got a bit of time here to go and look at potentially invading this blue side, doing something about the Jinx. Again, when we think about economy per minute, this is not how I like to view it. I like to think more about, okay, look, I've got this quadrant here. I can cut in for the mid lane. Oh, okay, I can cut into this. Uh, you've got some invades here. You've got some dives here. I like to think about this. But then you look at the map state and you're actually like, well, there's still a, a little while before grubs. All of this is still going to be here. This will still be here. Maybe I can shadow and snowball my bottom lane even harder and shut this Jinx down and actually get my ult off the map. 
So when you're a fat, early game aggressive jungler, it can be useful when you look at the map like this to actually make this kind of over aggressive play. So look, they're basing, I've got numbers advantage here. Let me go ahead. Okay, now Rexa is gonna go over this wall. You saw the Kha'Zix there on the left, and the reason I just went back quickly is because of what happens here. What's the Kha'Zix? <laughs> Jumps onto a Rex side, gets knocked up and absolutely eviscerated. Nordless ult goes three onto the Jinx. We're not quite able to get the W. The Thresh is too far away for the W. We're taking the turret shots. Kaisa goes in, Nordless goes in, flashes burned. Jinx has not got the ult up. She's gonna ignite it. Ignite it, use it. it again, just a little over aggressive for me. It's all okay, but I don't like when we stretch too far. The, the, get, the kill on the Kha'Zix, zoning the bottom lane. Cool. Now we get free plates, right? Plates, waves, shove, reset, topside camps, Diana, grubs. You know, as Rex say here, you can just go top lane, affect the Diana, kill her, Kha'Zix shows up. Oh no, you've killed the top laner, take the grubs, push the waves, push the plates. Oh god. I would much prefer to have not bitten off so much, pun not intended, from the bottom lane. Just, it's kind of just how I'd like to think about things, because you see the Kha'Zix here now, really desperate, really far behind, gets a freebie. Gets an absolute freebie for himself. And I always like to beat that play out versus beating the play out on the bottom side. Just a, a preference. Now, I've played a lot of Rek'Sai too, so I, I do understand the mentality. You've got to be very aggressive, very smooth, very fast. But you also don't want to be uncompromising with your pathing, right? You want to be smart about it. You want to have the right leads in the right places. Finish that sucker off. Very nice. Don't know what that noise was. A little bit of a Rek'Sai purr, maybe. Doing some uh, role-playing coaching. Oh god, that sounds weird. Or hidden market. <laughs> How much would you pay for me to coach you while speaking Rek'Sai? That's an interesting question. How much would you pay for me to coach you while uh, uh, you're playing, you know, Yumi Jungle or something like that? I don't know. I can only imagine that there's some sort of upscale market for that, but we'll we'll carry on talking about the game now, not that stuff. Uh, a little flash knock up there from the Rex. I haven't seen one just yet. This is why I like facing the Azir, because uh, you can see I'm already smiling before she ults. You know you're going to get knocked back. You're just going to ult right back in. Just like the Evelyn with the E and the Rex out with the ult, we're able to ignore the fact that that guy has that knockback Azir ultimate. Now, I am a fan of uh, six grubs and hitting plates. Rek'Sai has not done this here. I do kind of like shoving just to take some for myself. But obviously it's not wrong to go back to your blue side. We see the Kha'Zix here. We know he's going to be in some sort of desperate maneuver or gameplay at this particular stage. He's down 500 gold. Honestly, thought he'd be down more. He's still here. Yep. That's a lot of time wasting. And there's the Galio. Ulting in for mega safety. Rek'Sai is able to fill the quadrant. Take it all down. And now can hold mid lane a little bit. No ult for the Azir. Let's see what she tries to do. Let's see the power level we have. Dry Breaker into that full combo as always. That's a lot of damage here. Really looking to use as much upfront damage as possible. Yeah, that's a big thing. That's why this is so good. Just go this. I have tried Lethality. I will say, like, you do have damage in relation to this build. But you have no damage compared to what you used to be. Like, it, it's you know and notice that, that feel. And here again... Keeping up this aggressive prior thing, getting into the jungle is all well and good, but Diana can rotate. Azir's coming out of base. Kha'Zix is obviously here. He does get that away. I'm fine with you getting in the face of the enemy jungler to a large degree on Rek'Sai, but again, I still, the way I played it, I do prefer a bit more. This aggression tapered down by like 10%, if that makes sense. So I basically see it as, look, I can push this guy off. I got the, the scuttle on the top side. I could go ahead and do these things. Or I got a free dragon. I can kill the Jinx again. I much prefer the loop power thing of ganking the same lane multiple times in a row. While this Kha'Zix gets a few things here. I'll give him the, the red buff and maybe he can take the scuttle crab. Yeah, sure, he's going to kill the oh god anyway. But what I've done now is taken another dragon, killed the bottom lane another three times, and so on and so forth. Uh, but Rek'Sai is still very, very strong. And because of this pressure... The Kha'Zix is severely compromised, but at the same time, the guy is only down 600 gold. For how much the jungle difference is here, should that be the case? Should Rek'Sai only be down uh, up 600 gold? Hell no. And I do feel a little bit of the chaos is causing us issues in this particular scenario. So, our bottom lane are actually able to get that bottom lane turret once again. Junglers hold mid lanes. Don't die though. And it's an Azir, it's tough. You can hold a little bit, but don't sit there and take it all. Because now we want to regenerate and rotate. Azir 
Again, gets knocked up. We get the auto, uh, auto attack animation combo on that Q. This time understands that he can dash through back. And uh, I'll play direct side a little bit there. Kaiser's out of base. See, I don't want to give them a free dragon. Why do they deserve a free dragon? I feel like we could have had total control of the dragons, the heralds, the mites. Or what are they? The grubs. I feel like we could have totally controlled everything, but... Those, these are minor things, right? They're optimization things. The, it's just a case of... What could we have done better? Maybe a bit more measured? Uh, could we have maybe not died as much or helped our bottom lane? Like, we haven't died at all, but our bottom lane have died based off of our plays. It's just thinking like this. It's optimizations. Because obviously you can't play on low elo, in diamond or below, even you can play like this. You're not going to be punished. There's no stress. But in GM Challenger, you don't want to give any laners, any junglers, even a, an inch of power. However, that being said, we're really far ahead because Kaisa's done her job. Urgot's done a decent job as well. Held his turret. Boom! Dinah says, yes, I can do this with a flash force of the flash from the Urgot. As your TP's in at this stage, that's fine because he's got no mid lane turret. We'll get a kill here. Whew, Urgot tried. Rexet goes back to base. Um, look, you can do this on certain champions. Rek'Sai and Lee Sin, things like this. You can be aggressive early, get your mythic, sorry, mythic first item, and then build Knight's Farm, protect your friend Kaiser, protect your friend, whatever. I do not advise you actually do this. I still think the Stripe Blaker, Black Flavor, Sterics combo is the goated way to go. You simply do this and snowball and win the game. Yeah, don't even think about it. You've got your Morph and Mortis as you need it. you got your GA. If you want to go full tank and get a spirit visage and things like this, I wouldn't personally, but you can do it. And obviously we have this Stripe Breaker Eclipse technology, which some people do enjoy as well. However, the facto fighter, best way to go objectively, you just don't die when you play properly, especially when you have this kind of lead. So I invite you, my friends, to build that way. If you are in a flex game, flex fives, clash fives, uh, you know, prime league, and you just have... Reckless on ADC, well, Prime Reckless on ADC, let's just say. You got a ruler or something like this. Yeah, sure ahead. Go, sure ahead. Go ahead, build a nice Val, try your stuff, but... In solo queue, it's not personally how I would see things in terms of controlling winning games. But R is up, we do have missing HP here. There we go, Kha'Zix gets the heal. Wait before we go Burrow, we hit the strike break into the knockup auto attack. And a little bit of a smite. Uh, auto as well. We hit the Q. We miss the Q there. We do have flash up here and we do have E available, but it is Anazia, so... God, that's when you miss Prowler's Claw, man. That, that is so when you miss it. Because right there you got a flash, Prowler's Claw, knock up, auto attack cancel into a full bite E. It's... It was so easy to assa assassinate people back then with this. I agree it was a little unhealthy, but you could do it. You could do it, 100%. Now we cannot, 100%. Go mid lane here, Jinx again trying to take that turret, Thresh Lantern, she presses it. I want, let's see the stats at the end, right? Damage redirected, zero healing received, uh, zero at this particular state. I understand why this is bought, but I don't always agree. That it's too supportive for me. For Solid Q, it's just too much. And again, like you don't, it's not like you have the Jinx here at 7-4-3. I mean, the Kaisa's fed, sure. The Kaisa's in a decent position, yes. But that proximity's not always going to be close enough, right? And it's not like she's 12-0. You are your own carry in this game. You are the carry, 7-0-4. Just like to point that out. Sometimes you get really good games and the itemization's a little wonky, so I'll probably put the proper itemization in the thumbnail. Please pay attention to that. I'm not trying to clickbait you. Just telling you that's the best way to build her, but if you want, if you need to be a support, you can do this. I'm not a fan of this either. Look at this. We're shadowing them to such a high degree. It's important to do so, especially when you think like this with this itemization. But there's no reason why you couldn't do your blue side quadrant or do some camps in shadow. Okay, we can push up a bit more. Maybe I can shadow down here. Like maybe I can shadow this. You want to keep moving. You don't want to sit around while your ADC farms. You're losing your econ advantage. 9,000 to 8,000. I feel like we should be 2,000 up on this Kha'Zix, honestly. Who disagrees with that? Definitely, we should be that far up. Now we're shadowing again. Obviously, it's good to shadow and trap. But 
because we're not really doing anything, this vision here, we're not scanning, we're not taking camps, the mid-game fundamentals here are completely failing. The macro is, let's all chill and wait for a fight. Why? You have a lead. Just keep getting a lead with zero risk. Right? And the zero risk is control your camps, move it up together, do a little 1-3-1, one, one, do a 1-4-0, one, rotate and cap people off, take their camps in their jungle, uh, maybe look for some picks of people who are overcommitting on split, but don't go in here. This is a high risk play, why are we even doing this? You don't have old Rek'Sai damage, this isn't Prowler's Call Rek'Sai, you can't do anything here. So, in this situation, when your teammates get caught out and no one's doing anything, that's when, out of base, Krugs, Red, Raptors, Shadow, nothing, alright. Wolves, Grump, Blue, Shadow. Do you see how we did that? We passed towards where we wanted to be. We had a look to see if there's something we could do. If nothing, I loop. Go Wolves, Grump, Blue to get good sequencing, but also to provide me pathing directly back to mid lane so I can consistently take camps and path in that direction if my team needs my help. But I'm not a fan of the fact that we basically sat around for a very long time doing absolutely nothing. No, no, no. However, you see the pings? Kha'Zix bot, team has to retract and go back to base. They're low. Can we snack away a Baron here? This is a good decision. Herald's a little wasted, but this is a good decision, obviously. And don't results bases. Don't think, oh, you see, they sat around for 12,000 years, and uh, now they get a Baron. No, they're, they're lucky in that the enemy team... Overstayed their welcome, have to reset, and they're taking a good advantage uh, of the Kha'Zix being bottom lane for zero reason. I don't know why he's uh, dead here. I don't know what his strategy is. But this is not a healthy good mid game. So, let's speed it up. Blue. Grump. Wolves. 1200 in pocket. Scuttle Crab. Now we can shadow bottom lane. You see how that worked out very nicely, but now we have to go back to base when everyone's on the map. Kha'Zix shows bottom lane again. Kaiser, please be careful. Use your tunnels to get back on the map very quickly. Keep looking at the minimap the whole time. F key, obviously. But in a replay, you can be a bit lazy. Now we can shadow. See, now you can do this while you wait. But if you truly think a fight's coming, then really, really chill. All in on the Kaisa. Make sure you get the peel off. Keep the Kha'Zix away from her. Keep the Azir away from her. Thresh first, apparently. Diana goes in. Sit in front of the Diana. Uh, sit in front of the Kaisa, excuse me. Galley ult goes in. Double knockup. When you build Knight's Vow, this is it. You can't kill anyone in the back line. You gotta sit in front of the Kaisa. There you go. This is perfect. Perfect. Peel. Fighter. Disruption. Gaming on the negative side. Um, but at the same time. Let's see. 422 damage redirected. 543 healing received. I don't think it's worth. I don't think it's worth. I think it's better here. If you can peel off the Kai's on the initial engage. Especially if it's like a champion that can kill her, not the Thresh, but, you know, typical champions. Like a Rengar. Piss a Rengar off today. Ulting to kill the, the Kaiser who's fed, knock him up as he jumps. Now he dies. Cool. Now that he's dead, you can full commit yourself to using your tunnels to get into the backline to killing the Jinx. But because we built Knight's Vow, we don't have that kill pressure, and we went full tank, what happened was, we were stuck sitting in front of the Kaiser playing win condition gaming, which again is fine, but what if no one can kill the Jinx? And the Jinx's frontline held up better than you did. I don't like it. I'd rather go back line for some suction. And that way, because two people are now on you while you try to kill the Jinx and you can still kill her, the Kai's is free because you already killed the initial engage to just do DPS in the back line. You follow? Verbal lesson, but hopefully it makes sense. Regardless, though, it was pretty good. See, now someone's oversplitting. We don't need to go and sit and wait around. Let's go and actually try and get a fight. You're gonna... There you go. Alt. Well, Q into the alt, into the stride breaker. Gives us the kill. And now, obviously, you do that, so they're going to push mid. So you can flank here. Yes, yes, he gets it, finally. Oh, God, and Rek'Sai flanking here. Kaiser goes very, very deep towards the Rek'Sai level 15 at this stage. Jinx is doing a lot of damage. Appeal the Rek'Sai from the Kha'Zix if you can. Look, you couldn't because, well, play team fights don't allow it to happen. End of story. And now you're on the backside here, full tank. And your Oh, God, apparently, is a God. Now we can go back in and win. And now you're like, see, it works. No. 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 It worked because Urgot was a Chad and made plays. Now, take this. Take some of their camps. Good mid-game stuff. Always take their camps if possible. Deep Vision, full back to the Dragon. Uh, you got the Jinx ult coming through. It's too soon. Take the Red away. And now what do we got in pocket? 1600, so we got the Spirit Visage. 
Yes, we do. Kazik shows in the bottom lane with Azir to fight the Galio. Can't do anything. Kaiser now shows up, gets hooked. Galio all comes through. There's the knockup. Rex has moving on over. This is obviously good. Path towards where your bottom lane is. Let your Urgot do the work on the top side. Kaiser goes see. Look, Kaiser's really far away. See the Rex that follows her there? Got the Knight's Vow, follows her there. And she still dies again anyway. So my whole point is like... <laughs> sure, she lives a little bit longer, but she just died in two seconds because kazakh has got his items. Cycle Sword, Ghost Blade, Eclipse. Why not just be a mega fighter here who does not die? I mean, obviously we don't die anyway. And we do enough damage anyway. I, I understand these things. Don't worry. I, I get it. 14 health, magic, 40% uh, uh, magic damage at this point. We still do copious amounts of damage and we're unkillable. Already 370 healing on the Spirit Visage, but... Hopefully you're understanding my perspective, but also seeing at the same time how you would play Rexxon and the team fights the same way. Initially peel, then you can go backline. Unless, of course, the, your ADC already has peel, and you can go backline initially, but you really want to be in the middle of the fight. Always. Knight's Vow now. 2,000 damage re uh, redirected. Yes, it gives him more DPS time. Yes, it matters, but... The question is... Does the damage done by the Kaiser in that limited time frame over multiple fights supersede the damage you could have done yourself to the primary target of the enemy team? That's what you have to think about. That's the, re that's the relationship and balance. However, fortunately, the Kha'Zix is absolutely tragic and we're absolutely so far ahead, no one can kill us. And that is the point of actually going tank Rex in this particular situation. You have so much damage already and now no one can kill you. Nice. Uh, alt into hook. Funny gaming. See how we just sit? Like, it's just... It's okay, but like, if I wanted to play like this, I'd play Ivern, in my opinion. Or Lee Sin. It's better on Lee Sin, because of the kick. But anyway, really, really great Rek'Sai game. Recognizing the different facets of the champion, and I think that's also why I chose this one, despite the itemization. Because you know that everything in this game can be done with regular itemization. You know, and yes, I would do this as well. It's a jungle one-on-one -on -one battle. This is purely... For, for the, yeah, you got to do it. Let your team end, kill the enemy jungler, send a message. The jungle diff today was achieved with Knight's Vow Rek'Sai.